I was a little intimidated by Alan Williams, to be honest with you. He um, he kind of stuck out, number one, and not because he was uh, big and, and all. He was actually shorter than most of the offensive linemen on our football team. He was just as big and strong. He just wasn't as tall. But... Allen was intimidating. He had a intensity about him, which probably he had to have to hang in there with the guys he was competing with and against. And I just remember scrimmages and watching Allen tear into people and how tenacious he was. And, and also there was a sense of, you know, guys on the team liked him. And he was a kind of a win at all cost, kind of a take no prisoners, tough guy, the kind of guys coaches love uh, at the University of Texas. Well, I recruited Allen, uh, of course, out of Brazosport High School. I brought back the film and Coach Leon Manley was coaching the offensive line. He looked and said, yes, let's go after him. So I went back down. Well, I hadn't met Allen yet, of course. and. Um, the coach did venture something about it. A lot of people think he's too short. And so he, I got the coach to get him to, to bring him out. And I look, I thought he was in junior high. I, I mean, I, I think he was only like 17 years old when I was recruiting him. And, and I thought, this kid, this is a kid. He ain't, he's not a senior in high school. I just remember seeing and thinking when I was recruiting him, you know, I, I know he's short, I know he's young, but we, we can redshirt him. He's going to be a player, and certainly he was. Ended up being a very, very good offensive lineman. And I distinctly remember being on the sidelines trying to get in there and watching Allen Williams. He was a, he was a tornado. Allen, because of his stature, he had to be that way to play the position he played. He was blocking in practice over his five-year period of time against four of the best defensive tackles that have ever played at the University of Texas. Two of them won the Lombardi Trophy, which is the best defensive lineman in the country. Two of those guys won it. And the other two played in the NFL. And one of them was a first-round draft pick. Usually those guys that are real, real quiet, like Allen, you don't mess with, you know, because you don't know maybe how they're going to go. <laughs> You're not quite sure. Is he going to go nuts or, you know, or is he going to run away? But you don't mess with them because you're afraid to find out what they might do. But I think everyone knew that you don't mess with Allen because uh, just his his attitude and his, his uh, uh, mental capacity and his physical physical ability uh, told you he'd probably be a handful. Allen enjoyed his Friday nights and his weekends just like you might imagine a starting left guard at the University of Texas would. But Allen again was a little more intense than, <laughs> than most. I do remember the Sunday I met Allen Williams. We were having church in Westlake High School. At the conclusion of the service I said, is there an Alan Williams here? Would you come to the front and let me pray for you? And I saw Alan coming down the steps. He was on crutches, his beautiful wife and family with him. And I laid eyes on him, and I saw a man who was somewhere between who he was and who he could be. Alan Williams began to blossom in the place where life wounded him. That's what transformation does. It's a healing that pours out of your wound. And Alan was so wounded uh, medically and in his soul he was wounded. But I saw God do something by his Holy Spirit and he began to blossom. And that blossoming and flourishing spilled out onto his whole family. Enda and the boys, I just, uh, I can't begin to tell you how who they were and who they are now it's like a before and after picture. It's, it's incredible. They are trophies of the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. This man went from uh, a man who was high capacity, self-propelled, type A, to someone totally dependent on Jesus Christ. To see that transformation in his life, it's like this beautiful canvas. 
and the Lord begins to paint something that we sort of just, you know, did our best of, and then the master takes the paintbrush and paints a masterpiece. Alan Williams is a masterpiece of the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. I, t I told someone before that uh, and now I've seen uh, what a Christian he is and how much he does for for the uh, the public and all. I, I want to be like him when I grow up. And I think that would be, you know, and I would hope my children are going to be like Alan Williams when, when they grow up. When the doctors said you have a 25% chance of living more than five years and then I think it got worse from there the percentages went down then it didn't you get to a point where you go well really maybe it doesn't matter how tough he is and I just think God put him in a place where to where a guy's used to just taking the bull by the horns and making it happen himself I think I, I, I think he's like Paul, the Apostle Paul. I think he's so tough. God had to break him down, which which isn't easy, to fill him up and use him. And it's it's just amazing to see how I know God's using him in a mighty way in his life. Uh, but I, I, when I read the Apostle Paul and about him, I think about Alan. Before I met him, I, I understand that he believed in God but didn't know the work of the Holy Spirit and how it could could really transform a heart, transform your thinking, and really help you day to day. And when I saw Alan open his heart and open his eyes to the work of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> it was the most beautiful thing. What he originally resisted, he now accepted and it healed him from the inside out. I would just say to anyone who would look into Alan Williams' experience of embracing the Holy Spirit, it is the most beautiful thing you can ever do. It will help you completely be transformed to God moving in your life. I had colon cancer and and I just felt that God still wanted to use me and that's why I'm still here and that's exactly what I think about Alan. That, I, that God did not want to take Alan with him at that point because and you see what he's doing now in the in the uh, neighborhood and in the the city of Austin and the state. I mean, he's doing what God has asked us to do and to promote Jesus and to teach Jesus and to make sure that we respect God and, and, uh, and his, his, his uh, guidance through the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what I see with Alan. Sometimes God works best through the broken areas of our life and pain is God's megaphone to speak to us about brokenness in our life and about where we can grow. And I think it was pain. Pain in Alan's life where he finally yielded himself to God. And God took that great man and said, I'm going to do something wonderful through you. Look what the Lord has done. I would say to anyone who looks at Alan's life, would say, embrace the pain of this moment. God is going to use it for His glory. Transformation is the nail that I hung my hat on when I started Life Austin uh, over a decade ago. I just wanted to see people's lives transformed. I, I didn't want them just to think better thoughts and behave better and be better. I wanted them to lean into the Holy Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to marinate in the Holy Spirit and that's what I've seen happen uh, as I've been able to introduce people to the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God I've just seen this blossoming in people's lives. Alan Williams would be one that I would just hold up and say look what he was look what he is now it's that caterpillar to a butterfly it's I was crawling, I was walking along best I could, now watch me fly. The color and the heights and the quality and the character. Transformation at its best in the life of Alan Williams through the power of Jesus Christ.